Hello friends. In this series, we'll be discussing bacterial structure. What are the components of a bacterium? First, there is the capsule. Then, inside of it, there is a cell wall. The second layer, the grayish layer over here. Then, the blue layer is a cytoplasmic membrane, the plasma membrane. Both the cell wall and the cytoplasmic membrane together are called the cell envelope. Inside the bacterium, inside the bacterial cell, there is genetic material in a region called the nucleoid, where the bacterial chromosomes are, here in pink. There are ribosomes, here represented in the very light blue color, you can see it in the middle of the cell. They are the protein factories of the cell. They make, they synthesize all the cell proteins. Then the circular uh, pink thingy it represents the plasmid. The plasmid is a circular extra chromosomal double-stranded DNA. Now, let's get started. We'll be talking about each one in details, starting with the capsule. The capsule is the outermost layer. It's outer to the cell envelope. It is one of the non-essential component of a bacterial structure. Some bacteria are capsulated, others may not be capsulated. A bacterial capsule may be made of polysaccharides. Mostly, most capsules are made of polysaccharides. Sometimes they are made of polypeptides. So mostly are polysaccharides. And whenever I say saccharide, you should think of sugars. And when you say peptides, you should think of amino acids. Okay. The capsule has two main important functions. First, most capsules are hydrophilic. They like water. That's why they help prevent dehydration. Number two, it's antiphagocytic. It prevents the bacteria being engulfed by white blood cells. Now, the grayish layer here is the cell wall. The cell wall is made of peptidoglycan, also called murin. Peptido, I'm thinking of peptides. Glycan, I'm also thinking of sugar. Okay. The peptidoglycan layer is unique uh, for bacteria. That makes it a biomarker. It also makes it a unique target for antibiotics. As the name suggests, this peptidoglycan layer is formed of a peptide part and a glycan part. A peptide part, I said when I say peptide, you think of amino acids. And then when I say glycan, you think of sugars. The glycan part is alternating units of N-acetylglucosamine and n acetyl muramic acid, NAG, abbreviated NAG, N-acetylglucosamine, and NAM, uh, abbreviation for N-acetylmuramic acid. The glycan part is formed of layer. Each layer consists of alternating units of NAM and NAG. Each layer, here in the red, represents NAG. Each layer is alternating unit between the red and the blue, the red and the blue, the red and the blue, the NAG and the NAM. This is the sugar part, the glycan part. So what does the peptide, the short peptides do? They cross-link the NAM of one layer to the NAM of another layer, of the second layer. The layer follow, following it. So they cross link the blue of one layer to the blue of another layer. So the peptide part, here you can see it. It cross links the blue of one layer, the NAM, then n acetyl muramic acid of one layer, to the blue of another layer. As you can see, this cross linking is very 
pendant and it is what gives the structure its rigidity. So we can view the structure as a one macro molecule. The main function of the cell wall is to protect the cells from osmotic burst. Why would osmotic burst even occur? See inside the cell, the cytoplasm of the cell, inside the cell there is DNA, protein, enzyme, ions and salts. This causes high osmotic pressure inside the cell and low osmotic pressure outside of it. Relative difference in due to the osmotic pressure. This structure is the cell wall. So the cell wall protects the cell from exploding, from bursting, even though the osmotic pressure inside the cell may be up to two atmosphere, which is about the pressure inside a car tire. But the cell wall acts as a steel network that prevents the cell from bursting. So again, the cytoplasm of the cell is relatively hypertonic. The, ba the bacterial cell wall acts as a steel network that allows nutrient in and out of the cell, water in and out of the cell, but prevents the cell from bursting due to osmotic pressure. It prevents the action of this osmotic pressure. The second job of the cell wall is that it determines the shape of the cell. If the, the cell wall was round, uh, this is because it's rigid, it's a rigid structure. So if it was round, if it was ball shaped like a circle, like a football or a basketball, it would be a cocci. If it was rod shaped, the bacterial structure shape would be a bacilli. If it was a spiral, the bacterial structure would be a spirochete, as you can see here in the drawing. Sometimes it doesn't even have a definite shape. It has no definite shape. In this case, it's called pleomorphic, called many-shaped, meaning many-shaped. So let's recap. We learned about the capsule, and then we learned about the cell wall. Now we are learning about this blue layer, the cytoplasmic membrane, or the plasma membrane. This blue layer is called the cytoplasmic membrane. It's also called the plasma membrane. It's also called the cell membrane. It consists of 40% of it is phospholipid and 60% is proteins. Now let's look at the 40%, the phospholipids. From the name, we have a phospho, a phosphate group, phosphates, and a lipid port. Let's look at the lipid part. The main component in the lipid part is glycerol, a trihydric alcohol, an alcohol that has 3OH group plus fatty acids. Here is the glycerol molecule. And here is a fatty acid. So we start with an acid and this zigzag structure represents carbons. Each point is a carbon. This zigzag structure again represents carbons. The first OH group from the glycerol forms an ester bond with the fatty acid. You see here the electrophilic. At the carbonyl group, the carbon has a partial positive charge and the oxygen has a partial negative charge. So the O from the hydroxyl uh, from the glycerol attacks the partial positive on the carbonyl, shift, reshift, and so on and so forth. So we have a, an ester bond between the OH and the fatty acid. Again, another ester bond between the OH and the fatty acid. And when you add the phosphate on the last OH, when you add the phosphate group on the last OH, you see here the structure of the phospho. Lipid. So the glycerol molecule reacted with two fatty acids and one phosphate group 
forming the phospholipid. Let's look at this molecule in terms of polarity. This molecule has the polar head, the one here marked in yellow. This head is polar. It has many O groups. It has many um, hydrophilic groups. It's O. And you have here the tail, the two tails, the non-polar tail. You can see it here. The carbons uh, in pink. Okay. This makes me think you have two parts, the polar head, the glycerol, and the phosphate, and you have the non-polar part, the fatty acids. This phospholipid molecule arranges itself. They are arranged spontaneously in a pi layer, a double layer, as you can see here, facing the, uh, the non-polar tails are facing each other, the polar heads, one is facing outside the cell and the other is facing inside the cell. Now let's look at the protein part of the cytoplasmic membrane. There are two types of protein, integral proteins and peripheral proteins. Integral proteins span across the cell membrane, while peripheral proteins, as you can see here, are near one side of the pi layer. The protein function for uh, transport of ions, uh, for transport of uh, molecules. But what we need to know is that the cell membrane is a weak structure. It doesn't protect the cell from osmotic burst. It's a loose structure. It's not the major determinant of shape. Those two functions are the functions of the cell wall. So what is the function of the cell membrane? The function of the cell membrane is to control which substance go in the cell and which substance don't. It is the major permeability barrier. It it's also functions in energy generation. As we know, bacteria doesn't have membrane-bound organelles such as my.